Okay, today's daily rehab session is five exercises to help those of you with either quadriceps tendinopathy or patellar tendinopathy or even a patellar tendon rupture and repair, and now you've got a tendinopathy to help you strengthen up this whole patellar femoral system. Now, it does also work for people who've got patellar femoral pain. You've just got to be a little bit cautious on it because sometimes there's some cartilage wear and tear in there. But if you've just got patellar tendon stuff here or quadriceps stuff here, meaning tendinopathy and weakness, you've got pain from that, then these exercises are going to help you get back on the bus. Now, the first one you're going to work on is some isometric loading. Well, we call it total knee extension. So we're going to use a thick band with this. So this band here, medium power band, depends on how strong you are. Okay, You might want to start off with a little band like this. Be careful with this one so it tends to bite into the back of your leg. Most people should be able to start with a medium power band. So what you're going to work on is what we call total knee extension. This is your first exercise you want to start with because it's a really easy one to start with. It's got a little bit of load, helps you warm up into the exercises, so it's a nice and safe way to sort of get into the program. What you want to start with though is making sure your foot has enough, your back enough to get enough tension on that when your knee is bent around about 30 degrees. We're going to focus on starting from the sort of 30 degree knee bend and then going to zero degrees total knee extension and then doing isometric hold there. So there is a movement from here to here, but the good thing about this one to start with, it's not the shearing movement on open chain, which you're gonna to come to in a minute. It's the closed chain one, so a good one to start with. Make sure weight is through the heel. So like I said, enough tension at the start, so when you're there, it's trying to pull my knee forward. But notice I've got this a little bit above the knee joint, okay? For those of you who don't have it down on your tibia, Okay, it's creating a shear movement of the tibia. Have it on the femur, so the back of the knee there. Like I said, if it's too skinny, it's gonna cut in. When you start, weight through here, there's not much weight going through this, it's just a bit of balance, all right? When you pull it back, just push through your heel, straighten your knee. You'll notice you use a bit of buttock because you're doing hip extension, that's fine. Helps generate a bit of glute control. But try not to, if you watch me, when I pull back, and just do that. See how I move my whole body back? You don't want to do that. You want to keep it here, because otherwise you're not doing knee extension, all right? You're just basically using the body to extend the knee, which is not really doing much. So stay over your foot, weight bear over the foot, straighten your knee underneath you, hold it for 10 seconds, okay? Now, when you're holding it, you want to try for maximal squeeze of the quadriceps. So not only are you trying to straighten it, okay? I'll let that off again. You're trying to squeeze the muscle, you're trying to increase the amount of tone in that muscle while you're doing it. So you push through your heel, straighten your knee, squeeze your quad at total knee extension as long as there's no pain through the quadriceps or patellar tendons. Okay? Like I said, 10 second holds, you're going to try and do at least 10 of those, and I'll do it on both legs as well, but that's your starting one. The second one, we're going to do another isometric hold, but we're going to do an open chain. So that's where you come down to something like just a little band because you're going to go between your two feet and the reason why you're doing a little band is both feet are going up i'll show you what i mean this one if i work on say my right leg all right put that around perhaps the shin okay the bottom of the shin around the ankle the left leg you need to put that around the back of the heel and the reason for that is you're going to pull down with the left one so that needs to go under the heel on the left and the shin on the right now, what I mean by having a loop band is, by the you can't use a big band, is you're going to come up with two. Because what I don't want at the moment for this initial phase is you just pulling up with one, because that's the open chain extension work we're going to do later when the program's sort of through its stages. You want to start with going up. Can you get your legs to there? All right. So you're in a contracted state, which the tendon's going to like, okay? This at zero degrees extension, it's contracted, it's probably not going to hurt at that point, there's no load on my legs, I'm just straightening my legs, there's no load like an extension machine. From there, then what you're going to do is lower the left leg, okay, bend that left knee, so what happens is there's load on this quadricep now, okay? So this right leg is now trying to struggle and keep my extension. There's no movement going on the knee, there's no movement of the tendon, so it's not contracting or relaxing, it's just staying static. But the more I pull on that for an ISO, the more load there is there. And then to release it, back it off, then let it go down, okay? So you don't try and pull it up by yourself like a normal open chain move. That's later down the track. This is sort of the early phase of things. So go up, 
into that contracted state. Hold it there, pull down, resist it, far as you can with this leg, holding that isometric contraction, but you're still not dropping down yet. Okay, so when you release this, don't let it drop down like that, because that's going through range. And those of you who've got some maybe some wear and tear underneath that, you may find it hurts a little bit. So when you've gone up there and you've hold your you've held your 10, okay, then you bring it back up to take the pressure off, then you come back down. It's a bit of a process, but hey, if you've got pain and weakness, that much weakness that you can't handle anything else, that's the best way to start. So you go from your total knee extension before to this isometric knee extension, and that'll give you that good little base of sort of static contracted control of this to build up some sort of strength there to handle the next exercises. So once you've mastered that isometric, then you go into the eccentric phase of the knee extension. So that's when you'll need a band like this. Now, if you're in a chair like this in the gym, fine. If you're at home, just wrap around the back leg of a stool or even a, a coffee table or dining room table behind you, that's something that's solid that's not gonna move. Here, we're just gonna use the bench. So wrap it around here, in through here, underneath that little bar, if you like, okay? And then onto your foot. Now, what you can do, again, wrap around the front. I'm gonna come off, okay? You're gonna work on eccentric only, meaning negative or on the way down only. So the load is on the way down, you help it on the way up. And this is best for the tendon strengthening and the acute phase, I find, that you know if you start launching into concentric work, it's too much load, works on muscle, but the tendon can't handle it. So why don't you work on eccentric, which gives you more sort of tendon work relative to the muscle, but it gives you a rest phase. So the rest phase is here, okay? So I push up with the left and the right together. That's sort of rest phase, there's half the load. Take this away, there's the ISO that you've done before. So you already know how to hold that, you know how to squeeze those quads on. Then you lower that down through the 90 degree angle there. Okay, so you go from zero to 90 degrees. Hook it back under, push it back out, hold it, squeeze it, get the ISO contraction, maybe three seconds of ISO at the top, and then slowly bend through that range. You might get a little bit of a shake going on, depending how weak you are. And of course, that band can be upgraded. So when you go from maybe a yellow, you might even go to a TheraBand. If you're really weak, drop it down to a TheraBand, and then slowly work on progressing that back up to maybe the yellow power band, the red power band, the blue power band, and so on. And once you sort of got to that sort of phase, then you'll be doing normal knee extension in the gym because you won't have any problems. But first of all, you know, you've got to think, I need to build that base of tendon strengthening. This is a really nice way of doing it. You're trying to aim for that to be pain-free. For those of you who are not pain-free, what you could do is help it up and then maybe hit it help down as well. So you can do a little bit of cheating on the way down or just get that band appropriate that when you come down, it doesn't hurt. That's the best one. So once you've got those three exercises sorted, it's time to start putting some more demand on that patella femoral joint to get those tendons a little bit stronger. So we're gonna go through a single leg squat type movement, but we're gonna keep it eccentric as well. Then we're gonna increase the angle. So the first part of this is working on a step down if you like, but I'm gonna keep one leg here. So instead of doing that movement and coming back up, where I'm doing an eccentric concentric work, we're just gonna work on the eccentric phase and then help out with the concentric. So I'm gonna keep my foot here ready to push back up again. So if I'm using my right leg again, okay, I'm gonna go down into my squat on my single leg. When I get to the bottom, or where I feel like there's pain about to start because I'm too weak there, put my foot down, come back up again. So it's easy on the way up. So if you've got, if you're pain free on your patellar tendon, quadriceps tendon, your patellar femoral joint, in that movement, you know you can do the upward phase. You've just got to work on the downward phase. So if you find that from here, and you go down, there's a bit of pain there, okay? You can either put your foot down at that point, or you can keep your foot there, and increase a bit of load when you get to the bottom. So if I've got no load through my foot, bend my knee, sit my hip back, and then start, if there's a bit of pain there, start putting weight through here to take the load off the knee. And then I can push back up again just gives me a little bit of depth. So I don't mind if you cannot do a full movement like that. It usually means you've got a pretty strong joint if you can do that. So what I'm saying is when you drop down, you can put a bit of weight through here. So this might be 70-30 if you like, or 60-40 
depending on how weak or how much pain you got here. And it allows you to go a little bit further, which gives you at least some strengthening through here. Yes, you're supported by this leg, but it's more here than it is there. And that's where you're gonna get those gains from going from two legs to one leg. You've gotta start somewhere. So start with it maybe 60-40, then move to 70-30, 80-20, 90-10, or suddenly you're just basically going down by yourself on one, but always pushing up on two. Now, obviously when you get to that point, you can probably start normal squatting, but I want you to take that tendon strengthening a little bit further. So if you've got, at this point, if you can do that, you can step down and you've got no pain, but your tendon is still weaker on that side than this side, you need to start doing some decline ones. So you need a riser like that, flip the box around and put it underneath one end, okay, like that as long as it's nice and Now that's not a too much of an angle, but it's enough to make my load my patellofemoral joint even more. So now what I'm gonna do is the same sort of thing. Remember, if you get to this stage, you're pretty good, but you're just trying to get that tendon a little bit stronger. So from that point there, I wanna go and push my knee forward as far as I can when I squat. So I wanna go and push that knee forward and sit down, right there, then put my foot down, and rest period up. Okay, I don't expect you to do a pistol squat. If you can do a pistol squat, you're not in rehab. So if you can do this sort of thing, where you drop right down, come back up again, not much wrong with your tendon. So this is about trying to just work on the down phase, get a rest on the up phase. Okay, so from here, let's do that again. Push that knee forward, sit your bum back, lean forward, get that leg ready, drop it down, push your back up. And go for those rep brains, at least eight, no more than 12, three sets maximum, that is it. So once you get to that stage, you've done all those five sort of exercises over a period of weeks, you probably find those tendons, both those tendons are strengthening up, ready for normal squatting, single leg work, that sort of thing. See you next time.